Good morning, this is Father Louis Skirty, Mass from Home during the pandemic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today is the Feast of Corpus Christi, hence the gold vestments honoring Jesus Christ, coming to us in the great sacrament of the Blessed Sacrament, His Body and Blood in Communion. And it's especially important for us who, especially you, who cannot receive the Eucharist in person yet, except some of your churches are open on weekdays, so that's great, and soon the Sunday Masses will be celebrated again with all the restrictions. But in the meantime, let's give ourselves over to the Lord and ask Him to be with us, and ask Him to watch over us as we confess our sins, and ask Him for mercy. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our prayer intentions. As we pray on this, the feast of the body and blood of Christ, we pray for our sisters and brothers of the body of Christ. And that means I'd like to pray for all people, not just Catholics, all people, because Jesus didn't come to die for Catholics, Jesus came to open the gates of heaven for all people, but it's up to the people, all of us, to get there and to live his word. Especially I'd like to offer prayers for friends who have sent in requests and the continued health of Jenny, Mark, who undergone surgery yesterday, Mice, Frank, Mike and Lisa, Father Larry, Diana, and Stacy Provenzone, and the rest on our list. We ask the Lord to bring to eternal rest Joseph Giulino, Kathy Doherty, Tony Lupo, Kevin, George Floyd, and all of the victims of our recent protests, men, women, black, white, doesn't matter, brown, Asian, anyone who has died, we'd like to offer our prayers of consolation for them and their families. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament has blessed us, a memorial of the passion and death of Jesus Christ, Grant, we pray, so as to reveal the mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the Holy Scriptures brings us into the book of Deuteronomy, our first reading. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty days the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to your ancestors, in order to show you that it is not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock, and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your ancestors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. 
Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs the world. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes to the ordinances of Israel. He has not done this for any other nation. His ordinances are not known to them. Praise the Lord. Second reading is from that beautiful passage of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf is one bread, we, though many, are one body, for we are all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the blood of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The listeners to Jesus in that reading objected to the fact that he was using gross terms. You see, blood was forbidden, okay? So when you sacrificed all altars in the in a temple and you sacrificed your animals on the altars, um, the blood was sprinkled on the people as a sign of unity, uh, but never, never drunk, okay? Uh, that was savage in, in their perspective because it was something that their, ans not their ancestors, but their neighbors did, that this other Semite tribes did. Eating the flesh, well, that's gross, they're thinking. How can we eat this guy's flesh? Jesus focused on two aspects of life that really got under the nerves and under the skin of his listeners. And he said, that's how I'm going to come back to you. I'm uh, paraphrasing. That's how he makes himself available to us. In a term that was totally rejected and, and really they found disgusting to think about. Jesus says, that's how I'm going to come back to you. Of course, you eat this flesh and drink this blood, you will live forever. Now, did he know then he was talking about the night before he died when he gives us the Eucharist? Probably, probably. He probably knew then that he was going to make a new covenant with the people of the world through his own body and blood on the cross. And at that Last Supper, he gave us the words that come down to us, and you heard them from Paul, Paul's version of them. Uh, Paul's version in the Corinthians is probably the, the oldest version of the Last Supper words, this is my body, this is my blood. Uh, the, and we know that because of the, the years in which he wrote and the years in which the evangelists wrote. So he got it orally through the people that he was converting and speaking to and celebrating with, and he brought this idea up to give it to us and to remind us that, wait a minute, when he did that, when Jesus did that, gave us his body and blood at the Last Supper, we didn't know it at the time. No one did. 
but on the cross, it became true. He gave us his body and blood. John refers to in his gospel that when the when the, the blood of Christ came from his side, the earth received it and and was revivified and brought back to life in a sense. So Paul focuses on communal gatherings and how to behave at communal gatherings, especially when that communal gathering is Eucharistica, meeting for the Eucharist. So he reminds us of sharing bread. This is before this section, sharing bread with those who, who have less bread, Ch sharing of our food and our time with each other. And then he says, because isn't the bread and the wine that you're drinking a memory of Jesus Christ and a participation in the body and blood of Christ and then makes it very clear and there's that of course beautiful metaphor of the loaf that although it's many pieces and many grains it's one loaf well the same thing with the Eucharist it's one piece of bread before the it becomes Eucharist even though it's here where I am and you're not there yet because of the, the isolation period. But when you receive the Eucharist, we're receiving the same Eucharist. We're see, receiving the same bread. It doesn't look the same. It's not the same size necessarily. But it's the same bread because of the words of Jesus. See, we really depend on Jesus a great deal to give us his words and to hold fast to his words. But we have to put our faith in those words. Okay, so why? So, so we have the Eucharist, we have a, a gift to each other, and I think in many ways we really go to communion, that's the phrase we use in our churches, as you know, we really receive the Eucharist as Jesus intended. We become one with him. That meal makes us one with him. So we are what we eat in that sense. I don't care about vegetables and vitamins and all that other stuff. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the bread that Paul refers to as the loaf. When we eat of that bread, we are one with him. And we become one with him. We are what we eat. Problem, some of us forget that once we swallow it. Some of us go out and, and we, we, we do the same things that the, that the people of Israel suffered centuries before we enslave people we enslave one another with sin with greed with prejudice see and, and we, we're free of that and we, we have to live free of that there is no slavery there is no white there is no black we're all one in loaf in a sense metaphorically and we're all one in the body of Christ and we have to live as one in the body of Christ. Yes, in a veiled conversation, I am referring to the, the injustices in the world today, especially in our own country. Yesterday, I was stopped in traffic in New York by a group of protesters. And they were, they were um, calm, um, very verbal, uh, not violent at all. It did block traffic, and so I had time to video them. And in video of them, I sent it to my family, of course, to get feedback. And Leanne's response was they were peaceful. Yes, they were, they were peaceful, and, and it was good to be there. But I always go back to the roots of the protests. Good, you protested an unjust act, whether it happened in New York or another state, it doesn't matter. Unjust, injustice is injustice, it doesn't matter. And, and, and the color doesn't matter. It's unjust. Yes, in our society, black people suffer injustice more than white people. But we can't blame only today's policemen for that injustice. You and I are guilty of it. You and I so often disregard the fact that when we receive the Eucharist, we are receiving the body of Christ and we are living in Christ. We are what we eat. And we, Christians, have to stand up against injustice, whether it's racial, ethnic, it doesn't matter, and stand up and do what is right. So that's why when I watched the protesters yesterday, I, I wasn't depressed. 
it, it was interesting to watch. It was, I, as you know, I, I don't go to protests. I don't attend protests, uh, marches. Uh, it's not my style. But the, the cause is. But then at the end of the cause, where do the protesters go? Please do not go back to your same old prejudiced ways. And I think many, many, many of the protesters, regrettably some of them are in it just for violence, but many of the protesters are in it to soothe their own consciences. Because if that many people practice justice, require justice of their police departments, if that many people throughout the country fought and lived and spoke up for what is right and just, we wouldn't be in this situation. One of the comments I received back was that it was, they were angry because of 300 years of protesting, 300 years of being put down, 300 years of, of Ill, Ill communication between them and all the white people. Well, it's longer than 300 years. Don't forget, those slaves that we talk about 300 years ago um, infiltrated into our society, some through marriage, some through office, so they, they rose up in the ranks of the social gatherings. And don't forget where the slaves came from. They came from a country that sold them to the merchants. So their own brothers and sisters, African brothers and sisters, sold brothers and sisters to the person with the highest bid. So I, I don't know how far we can go back to say the cause of it, of this prejudice and injustice, but that's at least as far as we can go. I'm reading a book on Sicily right now, and the Sicilians have just cause to revolt, protest, because the history of, of it, that little island off of the coast of Italy is unbelievable. And different leaders came in, you had the French, you had the, the, uh, the uh, people in the East from Constantinople, you had the Italians, you had the Pope, everybody wanted it, fought it, just reaped it and raped it of its, of its glory in so often that we hear. And those people suffered. Now who are the authentic Sicilians? I guess those who are there now, but that's many generations, their blood goes to France and Germany and all over the world in some cases. So we're talking about injustice in the world, in society. It doesn't matter where it happened. It's up to us today to stand up for what is right. We are what we eat. We're here celebrating the body of Christ, the Eucharist, the connection he gave us, and, and the, the oneness that he becomes with us when we receive his body and blood in, in Holy Communion. We can't just come to church and then go out and be prejudiced. We come to church, even if it's your church home where you're praying now, or our parishes, and we need to pray with and work with justice. Pray for justice and work with people who work on justice in our community. I've said it once, I've said it again. Beware of the jokes, beware of the attitude, Beware of the, the, quote, little people in our society. They taught us through this period of COVID isolation that we depend on them. The male persons, the grocery stores, the pharmacies, and many of those people are minorities. And many of them are not, like ourselves, a society. Respect, justice, and peace. This is a gift to us from the Eucharist. This is a gift to us. And don't forget the word Eucharistica means coming together in joy. Eucharistica, happy getting together. May this day, this Feast of the Corpus Christi 2020, be a significant one in our lives in which we see less violence, more justice, more health. And we continue to pray for our health care providers and all those who are afflicted by the illness. These are very difficult times for us. We can't sit back in silence. One of the signs said that silence leads to injustice. I guess in many ways it does, yes. But marching in the street is not the answer. Vote is the answer. Attitude is the answer. And love is the answer.
As this is Sunday, I would like to proclaim the creed with you. And the creed says everything we believe. So let's really say it carefully and slowly in our hearts as we tell the Lord and the world what we believe and hopefully what we become. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us people and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, please accept the gifts that we offer you now so we could receive the body of Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all the creation, through your goodness we have this bread work of human hands, let it become for us the bread of life. For the mingling of this water and this wine, may we share the divinity of Jesus, and the human being, we share the Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread, Excuse me, we have this cup. Let it become for us the cup of blessing. Blessed God. Lord, accept these gifts that we offer and grant your church unity and peace. May these gifts be a sign in mystery of the offerings we present from our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For the Last Supper with was his, with his apostles, Jesus established for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as an unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery you make them holy so the human race bound by one world may be enlightened with one faith united by one bond of charity and respect and so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to heavenly realities here foreshadowed Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth now sing a new glory to your praise and adoration. And we, with the angels, cry out with endless joy, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It's great to have the fan on, but as you see... It's in competition with holding the pages down. You are holy indeed, O Lord, a fount of great holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending the Holy Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Our mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Father, remember those for whom we pray today, our families and friends, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection of Jesus, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and the bishops of our various dioceses. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world. Father, in your goodness, we ask your blessings upon all those that we present to you. Help them to rest in peace and grant them, as united with Christ in his death, they will share his resurrection. Father, in your good goodness, have mercy on all of us, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Assuring us of our oneness with the Father, Jesus told us what to call him, Daddy in heaven. And so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from everything that is selfish and evil. Help us to be people of peace as we prepare the world for the return of Christ in glory. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is now. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us unity and peace in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Please share a sign of spiritual or verbal peace with those you are celebrating Mass with, and your family and friends as well. I invite you to recite with us the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ. Happy are we who are called. Lord, I am not worthy. You should come under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. with us the prayer to Our Lady of Guadalupe. As we look at the statistics, we realize that in the metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, the, the, the numbers are going down. However, regrettably, in other areas of our country, the numbers are going up of those who suffer from the COVID. 
So I invite you once again, as a community of believers, to maintain your social distancing, maintain the isolation when necessary, keep the masks on, and be healthy. And just walk away from anyone that does not have a mask on. We don't know what this period is like. The virus is powerful. But love and faith are more powerful. And going back to the origin of our masses at home, I have to say, God is helping us through this. God is helping us reduce the numbers, contrary to what a political figure said. It's you and God working together. Let us pray to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all the families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to, and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We welcome come to you with confidence knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother health of the sick and cause of our joy shelter us under the mantle of your protection keep us in the embrace of your arms help us always to know the love of your son jesus amen, amen. before our final blessing i uh, invite you once again to keep sending in your prayer requests and we will add them to our uh, list and pray for all your intentions and it doesn't matter what the intention is for if it's for health it doesn't matter that the person might not be suffering from the COVID virus if you want your prayers heard and shared just send them to us via email father loose skirty at hotmail.com and I invite you on to our site www.friendsoftheword.org and look at what's there and share it with your neighbors and friends and keep praying for one another and be peaceful and loving we're one body we really are you are what you eat let us bow our heads and pray for the Lord's blessing may the Lord bless you and keep you amen may he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy amen may he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace amen and may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's live in peace. Our celebration is ended. Thanks be to God.